With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> From Hollywood, the Jimmy Durante Show. Ink, I think I need. I think I do. I think I need. Oh, what a tooth. Yes, 10,000 Rexall drug stores will carry the complete line of top quality Rexall drug products. Bring you the Jimmy Durante Show with Peggy Lee, Arthur Treacher, Candy Candido, Roy Bargy and his orchestra, our Rexall sportscaster Tommy Harmon, yours truly Howard Petrie, and our special guest tonight, MGM's great little star, Margaret O'Brien. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Jimmy Durante in person. With a song. Santa Claus, what's in that bag? Even when things go wrong. Santa, what's in that bag? You feel better, you even look better. Come on, Santa Claus, please tell me, what's in that bag? Please, sonny, I've been telling you all day, this ain't no bag, it's my schnoz. <laughs> oh, merry, merry Christmas, Jimmy. A merry Christmas to you too, Mr. Petrie. Too bad your name ain't Michael. Then I could wish you a merry Michael miss. <laughs> Oh, gosh, Jim, you sure have your troubles at Christmas time, don't you? I'll bet with all your political connections, it was sure tough selecting Christmas gifts for them. On the contrary, Howard, yes. And my toughest job was pick... That's what it says on the paper. <laughs> don't get so smart, Christmas Eve. <laughs> and my toughest job was picking out a present for Henry Wallace. You see, two years ago, I gave a big Christmas party for Henry, and last year, I gave him a second party. So this year, I'm going to get him a date with Jane Russell. A date with Jane Russell? Isn't that a strange gift for Henry Wallace? Don't be silly. Can you think of a better third party? <laughs> ah, Durante, if you weren't so pretty, you'd make a good comedian. <laughs> Say, Jimmy, suppose Wallace does organize a third party. Does it affect you and your campaign for the vice presidency? Not in the slightest, Howard. Not in the slightest. I'm a candidate on four other tickets. The Democrats, the Socialists, the Republicans, and the Labor Party. You're a candidate on four different tickets? Certainly. Why be half safe? <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Jimmy, listen. If you want to ensure your election, you'll have to give the people a plan to help the food conservation program. I've been working on the food problem, Howard, and I want to report... I've that... been 82! I've been 84! I'll make it 86! I'll make it 90! How do you like that? A guy walked in with a box of Wheaties and two green speculators start bidding for it. <laughs> well, that's the conditions that prevail. Yeah. But as I was saying, I've been working on the food problem, Howard. Last week, I dug a hole in the backyard and planted some shrimp cocktail that was left over for dinner. Then I dug another hole and planted some leftover pea soup. And then I dug another hole and planted some leftover lamb chops. I watered it faithfully every day. And this morning, you know what came up? What? A gopher with a note that said, What's the matter, no dessert? <laughs> Food production can only be increased if we improve our national irrigation system. Why, Jimmy, I'm glad you brought that up, because there's a man here to see you from the United States Department of Rivers and Waterways. Well, what are we waiting for? Open a faucet and let him in. Yeah. <laughs> well, here he is, Jimmy, Mr. Ripple, the Commissioner of Rivers and Waterways. Well, how do you do? 
Nice to meet you, Mr. Ripple. Glad you dripped in. <laughs> now, tell me to be your problem. Well, the United States needs more water. <laughs> well, why don't you make a tour around the country? You're giving off a fine spray. <laughs> Well, I did make a tour. I started by diving in at the mouth of the Columbia River and swimming upstream to the headwaters. And what happened? Three salmon proposed to me. <laughs> Them salmon will do anything to get away from Del Monte. <laughs> but never mind the salmon, Mr. Ripple. When you're underwater, did you, uh, or do you ever see any pretty mermaids? <laughs> Confidentially, uh, how do you like them? Well, as a candidate for the vice presidency, naturally I'm interested in proving the Columbia River. Tell me, what can I do about it? Well, after swimming in it for three days, I've only got one thing to report. What? I'm forever blowing You know, I'm glad he left. I was going down for the third time. <laughs> Just a minute here, Jimmy. I just noticed. What's that string tied around your finger? I'm glad you noticed, Howard. That string means there's somebody I forgot to get a present for. Gosh, Jimmy, was it President Truman? No. General Marshall? No. Princess Elizabeth? No, but you're getting warm. It's Umbriaco. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Umbriaco. When I see a Christmas turkey, I think of him. He's a winner. And at Christmas, I know he'll be late for dinner. He won't stop by heck. He'll never leave a speck. He'll eat the turkey's neck. Don't stand near the mistletoe, or you'll be kissed by Mr. Umbriago. Let me hear it. Umbriago. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Umbriago. Happy New Year, Umbriago. How I, ah, uh, how I love that Umbriago. You know, last Christmas I remembered him. I sent him a brand new automobile with the latest invention on it. With this, with this invention, if you're driving down the road and you see a lady driver coming towards you, you press a button, the car folds up and hides in the glove compartment. <laughs> Don't stand near the mistletoe, or you'll be kissed by Mr. Umbriaco. If you want to be sure that the prize is pure when you ask for a drug preparation, buy the Rexall line at the Rexall sign of Rexall Identification. Did you know that more than 2,000 different drug products carry the name Rexall? That's a big family indeed, and a highly respected one, too. For in millions of American homes, the familiar name Rexall has come to mean the utmost in quality, purity, and reliability. So for any and for all of your drug needs, always buy Rexall. Have confidence in what that name means. Quality, purity, and reliability in drug products. Get them at Rexall drugstores throughout the nation, where 25% of America buys its drug needs. If you want to be sure that the product is pure when you ask for a drug preparation, buy the Rexall line at the Rexall sign, a Rexall identification. Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Well, folks, just like all over the world, it's Christmas Eve in the Durante household. Let's peek in on Durante and treat you. I say, Mr. Durante, sir, may I wish you a Merry Christmas? Indeed you may, and a Merry Christmas to you, too, treat you. Thank you. Tell me, how did you like that sweater I gave you for Christmas? Don't spread this around, treat you, but I knitted it myself. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. It's a lovely sweater. It's quite she-she. No, it's hee-hee. I knit them different for women. <laughs> <laughs> I love that kind of carry on. <laughs> now, tell me, where's Peggy Lee and the rest of the gang? They're all in the other rooms, sir, opening their gifts. How did you make out this Christmas, sir? Broke even, gave ties, and got handkerchiefs. <laughs> <laughs> 
But look, I need your help. Margaret O'Brien will be here in a minute. Now, how can I get this ink stain out of my trousers? Oh, that's very simple, sir. Use this emery board. Just keep rubbing the emery board over the stain, and when the trousers commence to get light in color... Yes? Stop rubbing. That's you. <laughs> Preacher, when you were a baby, did your nurse ever drop you on your head? Oh, we couldn't afford a nurse, so my mother had to do it. <laughs> now, about this tree, sir, are you going to trim it? Not after what happened last year. Let me tell you about it. Last Christmas, full of the spirit of Noel, I'm all set to trim the tree. Yes? So with the tinsel in my right pocket, the peppermint canes in my left pocket, the silver bells in one hand, the box of does that I'm using for snow in the other, and the popcorn ball dangling from my nose... I climbed up the ladder and I'm all set to trim the tree when I hear a strange noise in the kitchen. Descending from the ladder, I puts down the tinsel, the peppermint canes, the silver bells, the box of does I'm using for snow, and the popcorn ball dangling from my nose. I investigate and what is it? My cat wants to get out. I'm ready for silent night and she's ready for a fruit and a fighting and a fussing. <laughs> So I opens the door and off she goes to attend the big four meeting. <laughs> Once more with the tinsel in my right pocket, the peppermint canes in my left pocket, the silver bells in one hand, the box of does that I'm using for snow in the other, and the popcorn ball dangling from my nose. I goes up the ladder. I'm just about to take a sniff of oxygen, which keeps my nose from collapsing at high altitudes. <laughs> And what happens? The telephone starts to ring. So I takes a step towards the phone. I should have come down off the ladder first. <laughs> Removing a sprig of hollyhock from the ear, I picks up the phone and the voice says, Hello? Guess who? Gently ripping the wires out of the wall. Once more, I goes up the ladder with the tinsel, the peppermint canes, the silver bells, the box of does, and the popcorn ball dangling from my nose. And finally, after three hours, I got wires around my neck, wires in my pocket, and wires in my hair. So I plugs a wire into the wall socket, and what happens? The tree blows a fuse, but my nose lights up. <laughs> and you know something? It looked prettier than the tree. <laughs> Chicago 24, Milwaukee 57, Big Bear 36. Treacher, what are you doing? Well, I didn't have any lines here, sir, so I thought I'd give a weather report. <laughs> <laughs> a whimsical bit of material. An old coward must be on his payroll. Oh, you go on with the tree, Treacher. I'll answer the door. Well, Merry Christmas, Margaret. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. What a voice. Which Margaret is this? O'Brien or Truman? <laughs> Why, it's Margaret O'Brien. Hey, Merry Christmas, everybody. Gee, this is fun. Well, Margaret, you really got the Christmas spirit, haven't you? Oh, it's been wonderful, Jimmy. I've been out with a bunch of neighborhood kids singing Christmas carols. Yes? First we sang under Bob Hope's window and he threw us a quarter. Then we sang under Red Skelton's window and he threw us a quarter. Go on. Then all of us kids went over to Jack Benny's house. Did you sing for Mr. Benny? No, we split the money with him. He's head of our union. <laughs> well, come on in, Margaret. You're always welcome in my humble chapeau. Thank you, Jimmy. And here's the present I brought for you. Open it up. Why, Margaret, this is the best exceeding. You like it? Just what I wanted, a Mickey Mouse beauty kit. <laughs> I wanted to give it to you, Jimmy, because I think you're beautiful. Would you say that again? I think you're beautiful. Ah, I gotta have this show transcribed. A thing like that should go on record. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Hello there, Margaret. Hello, Miss Lee. Hey, Jimmy, Peggy's standing under the mistletoe. Why don't you turn out the lights and steal a kiss? Thanks for the tip, Margaret. Here goes the lights. Pucker up, Peggy. Mm -hmm. There you are, sweetheart. How do you feel getting a real Durrani kiss? I'm feeling mighty low. <laughs> what a blow. It's Candy Candido, this month's Woodsbury Bride. <laughs> He's lovely. He's engaged. 
He uses chicken fat. <laughs> now, come on, Mom. Quiet, I... Jimmy. All in sleep under the Christmas tree. How do you like that? This yule tile is too much for her. Let her take a little snooze. Pleasant dreams, Margaret. Where am I? All this ice and snow and reindeer. Why, this is Santa Claus's home at the North Pole. And there he stands with his reindeer. Tell me, are you really Santa Claus? That's right, little girl. I'm old Saint Nick. Gee, Santa Claus, how old are you anyway? Why, Margaret Santa Claus lived since the beginning of the world. I guess I'm over 2,000 years old. Gee, even older than Al Jolson. <laughs> Gee, I'm a lucky girl meeting Santa Claus and seeing all his reindeer. You know, Margaret, I didn't always use reindeer. On my first Christmas trip, I thought to deliver a message. I thought I'd deliver presents on horseback. Some of my helpers tried to teach me to ride it. He said, uh, when the horse goes down, you go up. And when the horse goes up, you go down. So I tried it. I got on the horse. When the horse went down, I went up. And when I came down, the horse was gone. <laughs> Wait a minute. Was it that funny? Oh, no. Your beard's tickling me. Oh, I see. <laughs> but tell me, Santa, may I go with you to deliver the presents? You sure can, little girl. Just help me get the harness over these reindeer's horns. we got to hurry, though. These reindeers can only wait eight hours a day. They're organized now. The reindeer are organized. That's right. Patrol makes anything with a horn join the union. <laughs> but I've got to get dressed for my trip. Here, Margaret, take this Peggy Lee doll. It'll sing for you while I'm putting my coat on. Oh, real Peggy Lee doll. Isn't she beautiful? I'll wind it up and see if she can really talk. Thank you, Margaret. This song is just for you and Santa. Thanks, Dolly. Sing it for Margaret and old Saint Nick. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Jack Frost nipping at your nose Yuletide carols being sung by a choir And folks dressed up like Eskimos Everybody knows A turkey and some mistletoe Help to make the season bright Tiny tots With their eyes all aglow Will find it hard To say goodnight They know that Santa He's ordered lots of toys and goodies in his sleigh And every mother's child is gonna spy To see if reindeer really know how to fly And so For kids from one to ninety-two Although it's been said many times, many ways Merry Christmas
Here's a 60-second story from the Rexall Laboratory. Did you know that even the very best drinking water is not considered good enough to use in the medicines compound in the Rexall Laboratory? All drinking water, you see, contains some chemicals. That's why you can taste it. But in the Rexall Laboratory, drinking water is first purified chemically and then distilled in a giant tank with a capacity of thousands of gallons daily. This distilled water is absolutely pure. It has no color and no taste. The purity of this water, which is used in Rexall medicines, is one more reason why you can always depend on any product that bears the name Rexall. So for any and for all of your household drug needs, always buy Rexall. At Rexall Drugstores, everywhere. If you want to be sure that the price is pure when you ask for a drug preparation, buy the Rexall line at the Rexall sign a Rexall identification. Good health to all from Rexall. Margaret, now that you're up here at the North Pole, are you ready to start your ride with old St. Nick? I was much younger when I started that line. <laughs> well, Santa, are all the presents packed on, the, on your sleigh? Well, let's see, little girl. I'll check my list. I've taken care of Winston Churchill, Ernest Bevins, President Truman. Wait a minute, I forgot to get something for my hat and a candy. Help me out, Margaret. What do you think I should give Mahatma a candy? An electric blanket. Those sheets get awfully cold in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I ain't got any more time to dilly-dally. Come on. Climb up on the sleigh and we'll start our trip. On Dunder. On Blitzen. On Dancer. On Eisenhower. How did Eisenhower get in there? He wants to get in training. He may be running next year. <laughs> Make way for old St. Nick Look down there, Margaret We're in Beverly Hills Right over Betty Grable's house Well, aren't you going down to fill Betty Grable's stocking? Why, bother She fills them much better than I could <laughs> But hold tight, sweetheart We're going down and visit a little girl who lives in the house here Let's go Come on, I'll knock on the door. But why are you knocking on the door? I always thought that Santa Claus came down the chimney to leave his bundle. Oh, no, the stork can't make it with his beak. Why should I try it with mine? <laughs> Hello, little girl. I'm old St. Nick. What's your name? <laughs> I'm little Candy, but I'm mad at you, Santa Claus. <laughs> Candy, why are you mad at Santa Claus? Because of last year. I wanted a pony and he brought me a baby brother. <laughs> they blame everything on old St. Nick. How old can a St. Nick get? <laughs> I've got a lot of gifts for you, little Candy. But tell me one thing. How do you feel about spending Christmas in sunny California? Well, I can tell you about it in a little poem. Christmas in California just isn't right, you know. When I dream of a white Christmas... I'm feeling mighty slow. <laughs> what a voice. What a voice. Sounds like, sounds like a tonsils were caught in a mix master. Oh, Santa Claus, I wish you'd do me a big favor. My little boyfriend, Stanley, lives in that house right next door. And he doesn't believe in Santa Claus. Would you come over with me and prove to him that he's wrong? He doesn't believe there's a Santa Claus? No, and he's awful stubborn. I'll knock on the door. So, Margaret, I'm not gay enough for you. You have to go out with a show-off in a red suit. <laughs> Please, Stanley, you don't understand. He's old Saint Nick. <laughs> Everybody wants to get into the action. <laughs> Look at you. Your whiskers don't even hide your nose. Sonny, the beard wasn't built that could hide this nose. <laughs> well, Margaret, you've made your choice. We're through. I'm going out in the backyard and eat worms. Do you hear me? I'm going to eat worms. Poor kitty must have heard about the price of Christmas turkeys. <laughs> Goodbye, Margaret.
Margaret. You've given me up for this pony. There is no Santa Claus. Stanley, don't you dare. All of us boys and girls here in America must believe in Santa Claus. All of us have enough food to eat, and warm clothes to wear, and many other things that children in other countries haven't got. When you live in America, Stanley, you've just got to believe there's a Santa Claus. There is a Santa Claus. There is a Santa Claus. There is a Santa Claus. Margaret, Margaret, wake up. You've been dreaming. Wake up. Yes, Santa. Oh, you're not Santa Claus. You're Jimmy Durante. That's right, Margaret. I'm not Santa, but I'm somebody very close to him. I didn't know anyone was close to him. Yes, Margaret. I am. Listen. I'm Jimmy Durante Claus. He's the partner of Santa Claus. His toy bag isn't on his back as he goes through the snows. He's got a better face in front. He hooks it on his nose. He's Jimmy Durante Claus. He's the partner of Santa Claus. Don't I seem familiar? Now think back through your brain, dear. I'm not sure, but somehow you look like his leading reindeer. The partner of Santa Claus is Jimmy Durante. Durante calls a sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Who can afford a car today so I ride an open sleigh? Jimmy Durante the He's a of Tonight is Christmas Eve, we know so up and down the hall. No creature stirring and before old Santa comes to call. We'd like to wish a Merry Christmas to you one and all. Candy Candy Doe. Boy Fargy. Peggy Lee. Oh, Patricia. Margaret O'Brien. Oh, Harmon. Jimmy, we've got to say Merry Christmas at least 10,000 times more. That's a lot of Merry Christmases. But that's how many Rexall druggists there are, Jimmy. You know, folks, many of you have already been wished a Merry Christmas by a Rexall druggist. We'd like to say it again. So, on behalf of Rexall druggists everywhere, Merry Christmas to all from Rexall. Touche, Professor Peatman. I'd like to add a Merry Christmas from your Rexall store, your Rexall store, and 10,000 more. Old Umbriago sends us greetings, too, from Rexall. That's all. How do you do? A delightful note, Mr. Durante. A delirious note, Mr. Petrie. Now, excuse me for a minute. There are a lot of pretty girls around here, and I'm going to go over there in that corner and stand over the missile lip. Missile lip? Oh, Jimmy, you mean mistletoe. You kiss what you want, I'll kiss what I want. <laughs> but thank you, Margaret O'Brien, for coming over this evening. And don't forget to listen in next week when my old pal, Gary Moore, will pay me a New Year's Eve visit. Merry Christmas, everybody, and Merry Christmas to you, Mrs. Calabash. And now, Tommy Harmon, what goes on with the griddle iron gossip this week? Well, Jimmy, our football time is almost finished. We have one or two big bowl games that will interest some of our Rexall sport fans, however, and we may as well dwell on one of them right now. Dallas, Texas is the site of the great cotton bowl battle between Southern Methodist University and Penn State. This game will be the twelfth of a great series, and this year marks the first year that both of the teams playing go into the game undefeated. From our Rexall corner, the game lines up as a great defensive team against a great offensive team. Penn State rooters believe that they can win if they can score twice. Their defense is that good. On the other hand, SMU's great team has scored at least twice in nine out of ten games. Doak Walker, SMU's great triple threat back, will carry the offensive weight against Penn State. It'll be interesting to see if Walker and company can break the great Penn State line with All-American guard Steve Suey. Our guess is that he can, so we'll call SMU to win after a terrific battle 
in the 12th annual Cotton Bowl game at Dallas, Texas. I wish I were going to be in Dallas on January 1st, but my eyes and heart will be at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Well, that's all for tonight, folks. From Peggy Lee, Arthur Treacher, Candy Candido, Roy Barney and his orchestra, yours truly, Howard Petrie. And Jimmy Durante, who says, Merry Christmas, everybody. Good night, Mrs. Calabash, and Merry Christmas. This program is produced and directed by Phil Cohan. Margaret O'Brien appears with the courtesy of Metro Golden Mayor, producers of Cass Timberlane, starring Spencer Tracer and Lana Turner. Good health to all from Rexall. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. When you wake up well-rested on a great mattress, everything becomes clear. I do have a favorite child. Things you missed when you were tired finally reveal themselves. I use memes as a coping mechanism. It's Mattress Firm's once-a-year sale and clearance. Get up to 60% off select Sealy, plus a free adjustable base, all with free and fast delivery. Deals this big won't last long, so don't miss out. The right mattress matters. We'll find yours. Restrictions apply. See store or website for details.